everyone, this is KWTV coming to you from the Aachenerwald in Aachen in Germany. And we are bringing you today the installment of the Ubuntu Jaunty. It's the same my grandmother uses, so good luck with it. Hey guys and girls, welcome to KWTV. As the lady said, today we're going to talk about installing Ubuntu Jaunty 904 desktop to your computer. We're going to do it in a few parts, so today I'm going to show you how to install your Jaunty, partition your drive to have a system partition and a separate partition for your data, so you can always keep track of what you have, even if you have to re reinstall your system and do it all over again. Next up, we're going to pimp out that desktop and make it look really good, adding nice effects and a nice wallpaper and make it look really kind of like, you know, not like Windows, of course, but like something that nobody else has and that's really cool. And the last part is going to be about installing the special software. We're going to add Skype, DVD playback and all kinds of third-party goodies to your Ubuntu desktop install. Not to make it a free Linux Richard Stallman install, but just the Ubuntu install that you want to have, that you can use, and you'll have a good time doing it. Enjoy! On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV, where today we're going to install Ubuntu Linux 9.04 Jaunty Jackalope on your system. Um, what we did before we uh, arrived right here was that we downloaded the Ubuntu 9.04 live CD ISO from the Ubuntu.com website and burned it to a CD. The next thing you have to do is install or insert that CD into your computer and boot up your computer. As a matter of demonstration, I'm doing this in a virtual machine on a Mac using VMware Fusion. During the install, I might do a, a funny Mac quirky thing that I need to do because I'm using a Mac, but I'll inform you ahead of time when I do so. So we've downloaded the 9.04 live CD, which will enable you actually to not only install Ubuntu, but also try out Ubuntu on any system without ever having to install anything or touch the hard drive. So make sure that your BIOS is set to boot up from CD-ROM, and after you insert the CD and boot up the system, you'll get this menu. You'll notice a little countdown timer here that will uh, go to the default option after 20 seconds. If you want to wait a little bit and want to scroll through all the different languages, you can do so by pressing the arrow keys. But for the sake of argument, we're going to install it in English. We'll get the installation menu, which will give us several options. Try Ubuntu without any change to your computer. Install Ubuntu. Check the disk for defects if you want to make sure that the CD you burned is uh, alright and uh, checks out fine before you start installing it to your system. If you're not really sure if the memory of your system is up to spec, you can test the memory using this system. And you can also say, frack it nightwise, I just want to boot uh, from whatever's on this computer, please boot from the first hard disk. So we're going to go for a try Ubuntu without any change to your computer, which is uh, a kind of a workaround to go to the, lo to the install. But I do want to show you how you can actually try Ubuntu uh, just before you buy it. What it does, it actually boots up an entire version of Ubuntu straight from the live CD. Now this is an advantage. You also have the alternate install CD. This will give you a text mode install. It's nice, it's geeky, but it won't show you the system as it is when it's finished. Now with the live CD, you can actually run the system, the, in the finished system from a live CD without ever touching the hard drive. And if you like it, you can choose to install. The Live CD gives you a nice graphical way of installing things, which is nice, but it's also great for fixing systems. I mean, if you have a Windows XP system that has crashed and you need to access the data, you can use a Ubuntu 9.04 Live CD to do just that. It will boot off any computer. If you're stuck at your aunt's place who still has that Windows Millennium computer sitting there and you don't want to use IE, no, ma no matter, bring your own Ubuntu Live CD along, and before you know it, you have your your very own working operating system using Ubuntu. As you can see, it has all the cool applications, games, graphics, internet applications, whatever, and uh, all the uh, nitty-gritty stuff that uh, Linux, uh, that Ubuntu Linux has to offer. And you don't have to install it at all. 
the cool thing about this is uh, if you you can't make any change, changes to the CD because you won't be able to write them, so you can't install any extra applications. But you do uh, you are able to uh, you know browse around and do stuff using the live CD. So for example, I'm just gonna start up the um, web browser here. Uh, see, I have to take the keyboard layout into account. For example, there you go, yahoo.com, using the live CD, not touching the hard drive. If you want to uh, surf some spammy sites or sites that nobody's supposed to know, you can always use your, your live CD because it doesn't leave any traces behind. But the most important the icon, since we're going to install Ubuntu, is of course the install icon. We're going to click on that and install the system. <laughs> Okay, time to install this baby. Very simple. Click on the big install icon over here and you'll be presented with a nice graphical way to install your Ubuntu system. It will ask you which language you want to use. Once again, you can choose from a ton of languages. You can actually uh, install Ubuntu in this language and uh, it's always fun to do that because you don't know what you're doing and uh, therefore we're going to go for the English. Click on forward and uh, we'll be asked in what time zone that we live. Now you can actually click the time zone that you live in. In my case, this is uh, Europe. By, by clicking down, you can actually click on the correct city or you can select the correct city where you live over here. I'm not on the Arctic, I'm in Europe and the capital of Belgium. Geography 101 is Brussels and not the other way around. Now, um, <clears throat> it will ask you what keyboard that you uh, would like to use. Now, in my case, I use a French Macintosh keyboard on my Mac. Us Belgians, we use an Azerty keyboard layout, so I'm going to choose something quirky. If, uh, however, you are using the USA keyboard or any, uh, you can just go forward, uh, or you can actually choose your own keyboard. Now, if you use uh, for example, US keyboard, there are alternatives, so make sure that you select the right one. And if you want to be sure that you selected the right one, select an option and press some keys on your keyboard, see if they are correct. So in my case, I'm going to go with, let's see here, French, France, La France, the La France, elle a une keyboard qui est Macintosh, Macintosh keyboard. There you go, that's correct. Yeah, funny Belgians with their funny keys, but it works just fine. Select your keyboard, select the right keyboard in your country, test it out and click forward. Now it's going to start up the partitioner. The partitioner will actually divide your hard drive into certain parts where it will install certain parts of Linux. Now, you can have several options. Either you have a blank hard drive, like I have over here, or there is already an operating system installed. For example, if you're using Windows XP, uh, Ubuntu will actually resize the hard drive accordingly and will put Ubuntu behind your Windows XP install. If your entire hard drive isn't occupied and you still have some free space, you will have the option to use the largest part of existing free space. or you can actually have your partitions specified manually and that's something we're going to do a little bit later on. If you have two hard drives, you'll probably be able to choose them in this menu. Since I am using a VM, it will only show me my VM hard drive. But this is the options that you get to choose from. Either you can have Ubuntu select its own uh, partitioning. So either use the entire disk, use the largest av available free space, or resize your Windows installation to make room for Ubuntu, or you can actually say, I want to specify my partitions manually. And that's something we're going to do today. It sounds hard, but it's quite easy. Every system has three major parts. The system, the user data, and the swap file. The system is where all the application and the operating systems are stored. The user file is where all your, preference, your preferences and your data and your music and your porn videos or God knows what are stored. 
and your swap file is what your computer uses if it runs out of memory and it needs some extra memory, so it will use your hard drive as extra storage. Now, today we're going to uh, partition our system manually. I'm going to build you a system with three partitions. One partition for your system, one partition for your data, and one partition for your swap drive. So, we're going to select the drive and say New Partition Table. Blah, 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 blah. If you have any data on this device, it's going to be gone if you click Continue, so be very careful. Backup, backup, backup. It will tell you the amount of free space. Now, free space, that much. I'm going to click on that free space. I'm going to say, make me a new partition. Now, there is one basic difference between Ubuntu and Windows. In Windows, you have partitions and the folders go into the partitions. In Linux, you have folders and the partitions go in the folders. So you can actually mount an entire part of your hard drive into one certain folder. And that's something that we're going to do. We're going to go for a primary partition and it's going to be the system, the partition where we're going to store our system. So I'm going to give it about, I don't know, five, six gigs, depends on how much you install. Seven gigs, for example. It doesn't have to be that large. Linux doesn't grow that fat. And we're going to put that one at the beginning of our hard drive. And we're going to choose the file system. Now, with Windows, you have FAT32 or NTFS. And with Linux, you have some other ones to choose from. Now, the one that we, I mostly use is the XT3 journaling file system. There is also XT4 that is very new and very spanky. And if you want to be cutting bleeding edge, go for it. I stick with what I know. I go for the XT3. And now it's going to ask us a mount point. Remember that I said that in Linux, partitions go into folders. So what I want to tell my system is, look, this partition has to be mounted in the very, very bottom of all of my folders, in the root directory. So that means that any folder that Linux is going to install is going to end up in this partition and go up that way. So it's going to install my system from the beginning into this partition. Therefore, we select the mount point as root. I click on enter. Now I choose, uh, it's going to scan the disks and it's going to um, reinstall, it's going to, sorry, it's going to uh, partition that first partition. Here it is. Now we're going to reselect free space and once again select new partition. Now it will offer us a logical partition. I'm just going to leave that by default and it's going to ask us for the size. Now in this partition we're going to install all of your data. So this is going to be the place where you have all your pictures and your text documents and your mp3s. Don't let it use up the entire size because we still need a swap partition. Swap partition is like spare memory for your computer. The golden rule is your swap partition is twice the size of the amount of memory that you have in your system. So I have one gigabytes of memory into this in this Ubuntu system, so I'm going to leave two gigabytes for my computer to swap from. So I'm just going to use, I don't know, 12 gigabytes for uh, 86, blah, 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 megabytes for this one. It's a logical partition at the beginning of the space. It's an XC3 journaling, that's okay. And now uh, Linux asks me, in what, in what folder do you want this partition? Well, I want you to mount it in the home folder. If you mount it in the home folder, all of the folders that are put into the home folder are stored onto this partition. So in the home folder are going to be uh, all of the folders of your users, all of your home directories, just like the My Documents or the Documents and Settings directory in Windows. Linux has the home folder. So all the data of the users of the system, all the specific user configuration files, all of that stuff that makes that is personal for you and the user that you use are going to be in this home directory. So we're going to supply it with a nice different partition. Click OK. And there you see. Now I'll add this one as well. And we once again click please.